Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And today, I think we have a couple of very interesting pieces of news to discuss. So if you guys are excited for that, make sure you press that like button. Also, I have a very important question, which is, have you sold any crypto this dip? Just let me know down below. And also, guys, make sure you check out my $10,000 crypto giveaway. It's the biggest one I've ever done. And I'm aiming to give away at least $40,000 worth of crypto this year. But this is my starter into a, hopefully a very good year. Having said that, the stock market is quite neutral today. It's obviously still bullish with a plus zero or plus 1.12 percent, Nasdaq plus 1.43, but it's nothing like we've seen for the last couple of weeks here, as we've been only on the incline or I guess increase, increase, increase since the middle of June. And the percentages that we're seeing today are not that wild, but it is wild that we're seeing such a crazy recovery for stocks. Now, obviously, Bitcoin is following along in a similar manner, like it always does. You can see here that the chart is looking pretty similar. The only difference is that Bitcoin moved so significantly down like from 76 or 67,000 all the way towards 20 something or actually $18,000 uh, that relatively it looks like a lot less has happened here, even though percentage wise, Bitcoin is also moving up pretty severely in the same little time span. Now, there's multiple reasonings as to why this is happening and what's going on. Partially, we can say that, okay, it has to do with the fact that inflation numbers are now over, uh, maybe because interest rate came out pretty okay last time around. Well, a trend forecaster that goes by the name of G. Slent slams the new CPI data, the consumer price index data, says the game is rigged. So CPI data is rather important for traditional assets like stocks and I guess indices as a whole, mostly because it shows how much prices have increased. And as I stated before, the more the prices have increased, it means the more that people are producing now as well, logically, the more you are selling something, the higher the price kind of goes to keep up with that new demand, but also the higher the production goes, the higher the consumption goes, everything just goes on the up and up and up. Theoretically speaking, government spending usually goes up in this same instance as well. But let's just say to combat that, to go and kind of go out of spiral, because at some point you get inflation that goes too crazy that the rest of your country kind of can't keep up. To kind of combat that, you get in this case here a very significant interest rate. The, he's saying, however, in his video, Salent blasted the 8.5% inflation rate when you got interest rates at 2.25 or 2.5 basis points, claiming that the true number would be closer to the 17% inflation rate, as he cited John Williams Shadow Stats, a website that offers alternatives to official economic statistics. As I stated before with the statistics, it's very easy to quote unquote lie with statistics. And what I mean with that, guys, is that we all have the same set of data, right? We all have the same sets, we all have the same data. We can all have different interpretations of that data though. And specifically, if you have your own way of measuring set inflation, consumer price index, if you, for example, let a specific amount of oil this time around in a different economical situation weigh a lot less than another scenario, it might be that the price increased by 100%, right? So like like a, a couple of other assets that, for example, only increased by 10%, you let those assets which increase by a small margin, you let those weigh a lot because, well, they, for example, are very replaceable. And there's also a couple of different CPI that are always calculated, um, which mostly has to do with replaceable goods. But in essence here, what he's saying is very much true. For example, commenting on the data that the gas prices went down, Salent compared them to grocery prices rising 13.1% in July from a year ago. Saying that wages didn't go up 30%, so eat gas and blow it out. Sure. Now, he's also quoting the media headlines that par partially attribute elevated inflation to lower interest rates and government stimulus. Salen noted that the numbers were artificially propped up. According to him, the inflation was fueled totally by the government, adding that zero interest rate policy and over $6 trillion dumped into uh, the to artificially pump it up. Then the Fed has been BSing that they were going to raise interest rates when it hit the rate... Um, 2%. Furthermore, Salent compared the U.S. figures with those of other countries, such as Mexico, which recorded an increase in consumer prices of 8.15%, stressing, hey, wait a minute, 8.15% and you raised interest rates and they're at uh, 8.5. And America's average interest, average inflation rate is probably about 8.8 .8, and you're having a 2.25 as an interest rate. The game is rigged. They're doing everything they can to keep it artificially propping up, basically. And comparing the U.S. figures to those of Argentina, which recorded a 71% increase in the United Kingdom's slant also concluded that they got 71% inflation rate in July overall. It's about 70-69% when you average it out to the whole year, and they're about 1% over it. We have about an 8.8 .8 annual inflation rate. 
and we'll have a 2.25% inflation rate. And over there in the UK, they're looking at a or looking for a 30% inflation rate this year, and they got under 2% interest rate, and we got a 2.25% interest rate. You got it? The game is rigged. To kind of go on that same route of things being rigged and things being out to get you, you know, in crypto, this is some phenomena, I guess, that happens quite often. And uh, Peter Schiff is also warning everybody right now. Again, guys, just to make sure you understand, I'm a very big crypto bull, right? The only reason I'm giving away $10,000 worth of crypto is because I really want people to get more into crypto, and I honestly hope for everybody that they succeed in this space. Uh, if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure you press the like button to also help me out. But there will always be fear, and to some extent, it is also something you should take with some caution. You should agree with this partially. Why? Well, Peter Schiff urges investors to sell Bitcoin amid the current sucker rally. So I'm going to say I disagree with the fact that you have to sell something amid a sucker rally. What I do agree with partially is the probability or the potential in a sucker rally happening right now. Fear and Green Index is also showing things are moving rather quickly. And again, just looking at stocks, things are moving rather significantly towards the upside. Bitcoin moving up rather, uh, radically. Ethereum moving up really above radically, just almost insane, really. Um, and, and stocks are just moving up and up and up and up and up. Even though all this looming negativity is all around the corner, I guess it's looming. So what does it lead me to believe? Well, that there's a good probability, there's a good chance that the dip is not over. As I stated before, almost any single sign was showcasing to me, okay, we're most likely, most likely not going to go very much lower than the dip we saw before. And that's my own thought process. But there's a very good chance that we're not going to see this crazy bull market in the near term. Even though my own prediction that I put on YouTube was that we're going to see a relief rally all the way towards $28,000. I still do not believe that this bear market is over and that the bull market is back just quite yet. However, that depends on your perspective of bull market. If your bull market perspective is, well, just the lowest point that Bitcoin has reached, and from there on forward the bull market starts, then I agree with you. If your definition of bull market is okay, when we're just seeing drastic increase by increase by increase every single day, which, for example, will only start once Bitcoin has crossed $40,000, or maybe even once it's crossed $55,000, well, yeah, then obviously not. But it's just something to keep watch for. Now, things on the other end are doing pretty good. Bitcoin mining stocks uh, record whopping gains in the last 30 days despite dull markets. Apparently, those are doing good. They're uh, almost breaking out right here. Specifically, Core is doing that. You know, they got a drastic increase in revenue and Bitcoin in the custody. Everything like that is doing pretty good. And actually, almost any single firm they analyzed here is doing rather significantly good. Potentially, though, as prices kept going up from Bitcoin again, right? We saw those significant dips, and afterwards, after the dips kind of came by, the prices started to go back up, which is also, you know, quite logical. Which leads me to say, you know, going for a Bitcoin mining stock or going for Bitcoin itself is kind of vice versa, because they both do well if the other does well. Or rather, Bitcoin mining stock does good if Bitcoin does good. Most likely not the other way around, necessarily. All right, Japanese banking giant Shinsei offers $60 in XRP or Bitcoin to lure in new customers. What? So up to 8,000 yen worth of crypto exchange ticket gift campaign for all customers who open a new account and make prescribed transactions, the bank said. This is very interesting. This is a very interesting concept. Uh, press release, Shinsei noted that it had opted to administer the rewards in either XRP or Bitcoin in a partnership with SBI VC Trade. And apparently they're giving you up to 8,000 yen worth of uh, XRP Bitcoin for carrying out the stipulated services and it will run from August 10th to October 31st. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. We all know Ripple's power or dominance is increasing significantly over in Japan, specifically through their joint venture with SBI. But I guess just SBI as a whole is doing doing a lot of work for, for Ripple over in that area. If you guys remember, Yoshitaka Kita was actually previously a member of the board at Ripple. Uh, they switched out. He actually went out and the CEO of SBI Ripple, you know, the, the, the joint venture, uh, actually took that spot over on the board. But him as the CEO of SBI Holdings, he actually predicted, or at least expected, XRP to at some point hit $10 per XRP. Something you should also keep in the back of your head, you know? A lot of these behemoths are also very bullish on XRP, which is why they keep talking about it or keep increasing its use case. They know a lot of people around the world will want this, and so they want to be early to all of it. Little critical problem with Solana, just had to share this. Solana has another critical issue that may harm your PC. So what was said, right? Take a look. Just take a look at the Solana official web3.js library. Installing it downloads 723 dependencies packed in 202 megabytes from NPM. It creates a 310 megabyte directory with 17,000 files. Almost all 
depths of unbound version ranges. Any depository update could bring Trojans to your soul apps. And so what he's basically saying is, well, there's actually a little key problem. Again, I'm not smart enough, most likely, <laughs> to understand exactly what the, um, what this could mean for the average Joe, except for when you're actually building something. But I guess for all the people that do, this is a very important thing to consider. Then again, uh, I, I guess from just reading it out like that, right? It's been here since forever. So he's just showcasing a flaw in the way it was designed, or at least the way that it works. But I'm assuming that he's just saying, hey, there's a potential for when all these things get unpacked, basically, that um, if, if something is wrong from the core, since there's so much dependency on that specifically, I'm also confused, depositories or dependencies? I'm assuming depths, meaning dependencies, right? Instead of depositories. But yeah, yeah, it says here, all depositories actually have an unbound version range, which means that they can, that any update can potentially bring malware to soul-based applications through the library if something is injected into the library, right? Because there's so much depending on exactly what's there, in there, because it's all extracted from there. So yeah, I understand. And yeah, actually looking at it right now, that was it for our today's video. I thought I had some small other update at the end right here, but I do not. I have a little bit of stuff to talk about regarding Ethereum, but I guess that will come a little bit later. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video though. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. Things are moving rather joyfully. I'm doing updates, my team actually, to be honest with you, is doing updates over in our Telegram every single day. I recommend you guys to go ahead and check it out. There's a lot of cool trading updates. There's thousands of people in here already now. And I think we're going to grow significantly over the next couple of weeks here. As we're closing the group at some point, right now it's free. Anybody can enter. But eventually we're going to change that up. So I recommend you guys to join it as soon as possible. And also check out my $10,000 giveaway. I'll see you guys again in another crypto video later today.